GISP Study Guide Section 4 Data Acquisition Section 401 Understanding of Digitization and Other Manual Data Collection and Conversion Methods Primary Data Primary data is collected specifically for the purpose of a researcher's particular study. Secondary Data Secondary data is collected for another purpose by someone other than the researcher. There are five types of measurement. Physical measurement, observation of behavior, archives, explicit reports, and computational modeling. Physical measurement is recording physical properties of the Earth or its inhabitants. Measurements can include size, number, temperature, chemical makeup, moisture, etc. Observation of behavior. Observable actions or activities of individuals or groups, not thoughts, feelings, or motivations. Archives. Records that have been collected primarily for non-research purposes. Explicit reports are beliefs people express about things. Uh, this could include a survey. Computational modeling. Models as simplified representations of portions of reality. The five types of measurement include physical measurement, observation of behavior, archives, explicit reports, and computational modeling. Quantitative data. Quantitative data are numerical values measured on at least an ordinal level, but could be on a metric level. Qualitative data. Qualitative data is non-numerical or numerical nominal values that have no quantitative meaning. Deceptive mapping. Deceptive mapping is when maps are used. Maps can be distorted for propaganda, military protection, or ignorance. Layer. A layer is a mechanism to display geographic data sets. Data transfer standards. Transfer. Follow Spatial Data Transfer Standard, SDTS, from the Federal Information Processing Standard. This is a robust way of transferring GIS data between computers with no information loss, including metadata. Industry standards. Typically do not exchange topology, only graphic information, and large number of format translators. The OpenGIS Consortium or OGC, is a nonprofit international voluntary consensus standards organization that created GML or Geography Markup Language, which is an XML based encoding standard. Lecture 7 Spatial Data Structures for Mapping. What is a map data structure? Map data structures store the information about location, scale, dimension, and other geographic properties using the primitive spatial data structures, zero, one, and two-dimensional objects, or more complex objects such as arrays. This is the minimum requirement for computer mapping systems. The purpose is to support computer cartography and not necessarily analytical cartography. A map data structure plus an attribute data structure 
is the minimum requirement for the additional analytical functions in analytical cartography and GIS systems. Vector or raster data structures. Vector devices are being increasingly replaced by raster devices. Most GIS software packages support both vector and raster data structures. Vectors just seem more corrector. Can represent point, line, and area features very accurately. Vectors are far more efficient than raster data in terms of, in terms of storage. Vectors are preferred when topology is concerned. Vectors support interactive retrieval, which enables map generalization. Vectors are more complex. They are less intuitively understood. Overlay of multiple vector maps is very computationally intensive. Display and plotting of vectors can be expensive, especially when filling areas. Rasters are faster. They are easy to understand. They are good for representing surfaces or continuous fields. They are easy to read and write. A raster grid maps directly onto a programming computer memory structure called an array. Rasters are easy to input and output. They are a natural for scanned or remotely sensed data. They are easy to draw on a screen or print as an image. Analytical operations are easier. For example, autocorrelation statistics, interpolation, and filtering. Rasters are bigger. They are inefficient for storage. Raster compression techniques might not be efficient, efficient when dealing with extremely variable data. Using large cells to reduce data volume causes information loss. Rasters are poor at representing points, lines, and areas. Points and lines in raster format have to move to a cell center. Lines can become fat. Raster areas may need separately coded edges. In a raster structure, each cell can be owned by only one feature. Raster structures are good only at very localized topology and weak otherwise. Raster structures suffer from the mixed pixel problem. Raster structure must often include redundant or missing data. Entity by entity data structures. Cartographic entities are usually classified by dimension into point features, line features, and area features. The simplest means to digitally represent cartographic entities as objects is to use the feature itself as the lowest common denominator. Entity by entity data structures are concerned with discrete sets of connected numbers that represent an object in its entirety, not as the combination of features or lesser dimension. Entity by entity structures do not have topology. For example, a G-ring representing a lake. Entity-by-entity entity structures are adequate when computing the length of the boundary, the area, and shading the lake with color. 
However, entity-by-entity entity structures are extremely computationally intensive if we want to find a county in G-ring which intersects the lake or to determine which river in string flows into the lake. Entity-by-entity entity data structure point objects. A point list consists of x and y coordinates and feature codes, which are the keys that are linked to the attribute database. Entity-by-entity entity data structures point objects, raster. Point index values or attributes assigned to cells are they use indices as the keys to the attribute database. There is only one pixel size. Entity-by-entity entity data structures line objects vector. Method 1, an ordered set of points for a line. An identifier for a line as the key to the attribute database. Entity-by-entity entity data structures line objects vector, method 2. A point file contains all the points, identifiers, and coordinates in the map and uses a point dictionary. A line file contains all the lines, identifiers, and the indices of its vertices. Entity by entity data structures line objects raster. Line index values or attributes are assigned to cells. Indices are used as the keys to the attribute database. Lines are normally thinned to one pixel width. Entity by entity data structures line objects Freeman codes. Freeman codes are a line as a sequence of octal, or eight based digits. Each digit represents the direction of a step moved along the line. There are vector Freeman codes and raster Freeman codes. Entity by entity data structures, area objects vector. A point dictionary a ring file contains all the rings, identifiers, and vertex indices, identifiers as the keys to the attribute database. Entity by entity data structures, area objects, raster. Polygon index values or attributes are assigned to cells. Indices are used as keys to the attribute database. An area calculation is performed by counting cells. Run length encoding could be efficient if the data is spatially homogeneous. Topological data structures store additional characteristics of connectivity and adjacency. Topological data structures can provide linkage between primitive objects, such as nodes, links, and chains. Topological data structures can have forward liquid linkage and reverse linkage. A finite number of chains can meet at a node. Tessellations and the TIN. Tessellations are connected networks that partition space into a set of sub-areas. A triangulated irregular network is a tessellation. The creation of triangulated irregular networks. Delaunay triangulation is used to create a TIN.
It is an iterative process. It begins by searching for the closest two nodes. It then assigns additional nodes to the network if the triangles they create satisfy a criterion. For example, selecting the next triangle that is closest to a regular equilateral triangle. The outer edge is a convex hull. The advantages of a triangulated irregular network are they are more accurate and use less space than grids. They can be generated from point data faster than grids. They can describe more complex surfaces than grids, including vertical drops and irregular boundaries. Single points can be easily added, deleted, or moved. Triangulated irregular networks data structure. The triangle is the basic cartographic object. A point file contains all the points and stores XY coordinates and elevations, XY and Z values. The triangle file contains the triangles. Three pointers to the point file plus three additional pointers to adjacent triangles. Triangulated irregular networks data structure. The vertices of a triangle are used as the basic object. A point file contains x, y, z values and pointers to the connectivity file. A connectivity file contains lists of nodes that are connected to the points in the point file. A zero at the end of each list. Quad tree data structures. Quad tree data structures are a type of tessellation data structure. They partition the space into nested squares or quadrants. They allow very rapid area searches and relatively fast display. Maps as matrices. A grid directly maps into a mathematic expression, a matrix. A matrix can be loaded into a computer memory as an array. Geographic information is needed, coordinates of the corners, a number of rows and columns, and a cell size. Run length encoding can be used, and a grid can do indexing and tiling. Ad hoc versus standard data structures. Each GIS or mapping program uses its own standards. Each GIS wants rapid input and output and transformations and wants to avoid, avoid computational errors and special cases. If structures are standards, programs can be reused and made as interchangeable parts. The Spatial Data Transfer Standard, SDTS. The SDTS is a robust way of transferring Earth reference spatial data between dissimilar computer systems with the potential for no information loss. It is a transfer standard that embraces the philosophy of self-contained transfers, including spatial data, attribute, georeferencing, data quality, data dictionary, and other supporting metadata can all be included in the transfer.
the Federal Information Processing, Processing Standards consists of several parts and the Open Geospatial Consortium standards compromise more than comprise more than 30 standards. Data structures and programming. Data model maps onto a data structure. Data structure eventually implies programming structure. Unstructured computer programming languages do not support data structures. Object-oriented languages, such as C++ and Java, allow definition of objects. GIS data collection. There are two main types of data capture, primary data sources and secondary sources. Primary data sources are those collected in digital format specifically for use in a GIS. Secondary sources are digital and analog data sets that were originally captured for another purpose and need to be converted into a suitable digital format for use in a GIS. Data collection typically accounts for 15 to 50 percent of the total cost of a GIS project. Data collection workflow stages include planning, preparation, digitizing and transfer, editing and improvement, and evaluation. Data collection workflow processes include planning, which includes establishing user requirements, garnering resources, and developing a project plan. Preparation involves obtaining data, redrafting poor quality map sources, editing scanned map images, removing noise, setting up appropriate GIS hardware and software systems to accept data. Digitizing and transfer are the stages where the majority of the effort will be expended. Editing and, and improvement covers many techniques designed to validate data as well as correct errors and improve quality. Evaluation is the process of identifying project successes and failures. The data collection workflow includes the stages planning, preparation, digitizing and transfer, editing and improvement, and evaluation. Raster data capture. Remote sensing is a technique used to derive information about the physical, chemical, and biological properties of objects without direct physical contact. Information is derived from measurements of the amount of electromagnetic radiation reflected, emitted, or scattered from objects. Resolution is a key physical characteristic of remote sensing systems. Spatial resolution refers to the size of an object that can be resolved, and the most usual measure is the pixel size. Spectral resolution refers to the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that are measured. Temporal resolution describes the frequency with which images are collected for the same area.
vector data capture. The two main branches of vector data capture are ground surveying and GPS. Surveying. Ground surveying is based on the principle that the 3D location of any point can be determined by measuring angles and distances from other known points. Ground surveying is a very time-consuming and expensive activity, but it is still the best way to obtain highly accurate point locations. Surveying is typically used for capturing buildings, land and property boundaries, manholes, and other objects that need to be located accurately. LIDAR LIDAR is a relatively new technology that employs a scanning laser rangefinder to produce accurate topographic surveys. LIDAR is typically carried on low altitude aircraft that also has an inert inertial navigation system and a differential GPS to provide location. Secondary Geographic Data Capture Secondary geographic data capture include <clears throat> scanning documents, scanning film and paper maps, aerial photographs and images are scanned and georeferenced, maps, aerial photographs and images are scanned prior to vectorization, Heads-up digitizing and vectorization. Vectorization is the process of converting raster data into vector data. The simplest way to create vectors from raster layers is to digitize vector objects manually straight off a computer screen using a mouse or digitizing cursor. Photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is the science and technology of, ta of making measurements from pictures, aerial fo photographs, and images. Measurements can be captured from overlapping pairs of photographs using stereo plotters. Orientation and triangulation are fundamental photogrammetry processing tasks. Orientation is the process of creating a stereo model suitable for viewing and extracting 3D vector coordinates that describe geographic objects. Triangulation, also called block adjustment, is used to assemble a collection of images into a single model so that accurate and consistent information can be obtained from large areas. Ortho images are images corrected for variations in terrain using a DEM. Photogrammetry is a very cost-effective data capture technique that is sometimes the only practical method of obtaining detailed topographic data. COGO data entry. COGO is a contraction of the term coordinate geometry as a methodology for capturing and representing geographic data. COGO uses survey style bearings and distances to define each part of an object.
COGO data are very precise measurements and are often regarded as the only legally acceptable definition of land parcels. Obtaining data from external sources. And the best way to find geographic data is to search the internet. One of the biggest problems with data obtained from external sources is that they can be encoded in many different formats. Many tools have been developed to move data between systems and to reuse data through open application programming interfaces, or APIs. More than 25 organizations are involved in the standardization of various aspects of geographic data and geoprocessing. The ISO, International Standards Organization, is responsible for coordinating efforts through the work of technical committees. The OGC, or Open Geospatial Consortium is a group of vendors, academics, and users interested in the interoperability of geographic systems. Geographic data translation software must address both syntactic and semantic translation issues. Syntactic translation involves converting spe specific digital symbols, letters, and numbers between systems. Semantic translation is concerned with converting the meaning inherent in geographic information. Syntactic translation is relatively simple to encode and decode. Semantic translation is much more difficult and is seldom met with success. Capturing attribute data. Attributes can be entered by direct data loggers, manual keyboard entry, optical character rec recognition, or increasingly, voice recognition. An essential requirement for separate data entry is a common identifier, also called a key, that can be used to relate object geometry and attributes together following data capture. Managing a data collection project. Most of the general principles for any GIS project apply to data collection. The need for a clearly articulated plan, adequate resources, appropriate funding, and sufficient time. A key decision facing managers of such projects is whether to pursue a strategy of incremental or very rapid collection. A further important decision is whether data collection should use in-house or external resources. Section 402, Knowledge of Field Data Collection. Field data collection types include remote sensing. There are three types of resolutions, spatial, spectral, and temporal. Spectral is the electromagnetic spectrum, and temporal is how often you repeat the sensing cycle. Ground surveying. Ground surveying is based on the principle that the 3D location of any point can be determined by measuring angles and distances from other known points. Ground surveying can be expensive and time-consuming. GPS, 
uses a GPS receiver to receive signals from GPS satellites to calculate the current position and time. Inspection occurs when data has already been geographically located and needs to be inspected. The field collection process. A. Determine the result of field work. B. Determine what needs to be collected, inspected, or surveyed. C. Determine how it will be collected, for example, with pen and paper, a mobile tablet, or a drone. D. Begin field collection on a good representation of the entire data set. E. Review sample field collection and adjust the data be being collected or the method of data collection. F. Plan locations and timing for field work. G. Start the field collection for all assets. Section 403. Knowledge of automated data collection and conversion methods. Aerial imagery can be used to automatically update GIS data. Data can be automatically updated or appended to existing data, such as a time series data set, and instantly converted to a usable format. Most automation can be completed by writing scripts. Automated data acquisition for integrating multiple data sets using GIS applications. As GIS users, we often have to collect data from many sources and compile them into a single map. But for just a few sources and a single map, this might be feasible. But what if you have to make a new map with updated data every day or every hour? Automation can save you the enormous time it would take to do that by hand and also help to avoid the errors that can happen in repetitive tasks done by hand. In this blog entry, I'll describe an example of automating a process to retrieve data, executing file format conversions, and update an online map. <clears throat> I'll also talk a little bit about some of the tools and strategies I used that will be useful for someone else automating a similar process. The project. In the spring of 2011, Dr. David Hill's research group at Rutgers University was working with online maps showing Terra satellite temperature data, along with other data from other sources. New temperature snapshots are made available daily on a server, on an FTP server, so the online map needed to be updated daily. Rather than having someone waste valuable research time continually downloading files and updating the map, Dr. Hill had me write a series of scripts to do the job. The strategy. I decided to split the job into three major tasks. One, get the files from the FTP server. Two, do the format conversions on the files. And three, update the online map with the new files. These just seemed like logical divisions of the work, and each could be a self-contained unit. If you're not familiar with programming, you might find it helpful to know that this type of planning, before you start thinking in programming terms, is typically considered a good way to start working on a computer program or script. Continuing, continuing with that pre-programming process, I wrote out the specific steps I would take if I were going to get the files, convert them, and update the map all by hand. Once I understood the steps, I began to look for scripting tools. I already knew I would be scripting in Shell in a Linux environment because that's the standard for our group. The key tools. 
The first key tool I found was the wget command. It's a powerful shell command that allowed me to make a partial mirror of the FTC pipe, FTP site on a local computer. Mirroring helped me take care of the problems of making sure the local copies of the files were up to date by comparing timestamps of local files with those of the files on the server. The next set of tools that were crucial in making this process work came from GDAL, the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library. This library has commands already written that can ingest certain file formats and output geotiffs and shapefiles. GDAL can also be used with other programming languages such as Java, Perl, and Python. The last really important tool I discovered was the sed command. Sed is a stream editor, which means you can direct the computer to read through a file and make changes to the file's contents as it reads. The upshot is that it's easy to delete, add, or replace text in a file. Sed allowed me to rewrite the files that underlie the web map with references to the newest shape files of temperature information. Putting these com commands together and filling in the rest of what the scripts needed to do was a long and often painful process, as programming tends to be for beginners, but it was worth it. In the end, we added the scripts to the server's cron, which runs programs on the computer, computer automatically at predetermined times, and now the online map is automatically updated with the seven most recent day's data available from the server. One more tip, make friends with programmers. I knew a shell programmer I could call with questions and he was an invaluable resource in putting these scripts together. Even if you're a good programmer in one language, having a friend who knows the language you're less well versed in can be a great help. Section 404. Knowledge of Remotely Sensed Data Sources and Collection Methods Remote Sensing has three resolutions. Spatial, Spectral, which is the electromagnetic spectrum measured, and Temporal, which is when the cycle is re uh, sensing cycle is repeated. Spatial, Spectral, and Temporal. Aerial photography and satellite imagery is used for remotely sensing. Passive sensors gather radiation that is emitted from objects. This includes photography, infrared, and radiometers. Active sensors emit energy and measure the amount of energy bounced back from objects. Active sensors include radar and lidar. Remote Sensing Imagery Remotely gathered data is available from a range of sources and data collection techniques and is often the only type of data that is not always easily found within the public domain. This is largely due to the fact that most of this data is acquired by equipment that is expensive to build and maintain. Types of Aerial Photography Black and white. Older and lower cost surveys are collected on black and white media and coverage over the U.S. Multiple generations are ideal for comparing recent change detection of the land surface. Color. More recent or higher cost aerial photo surveys are on color media and coverage over most key areas of the U.S. Infrared. Primary use is vegetation studies, as vegetation is a very strong reflector of infrared radiation. Sources of aerial photography. Within the United States, 1 to 3 meter resolution aerial photography is available from the U.S. Geological Survey and their business partner program, and can be found online at the National Map site.
imagery ready to load comes from comes in the form of digital orthophoto quadrangle doq or digital orthophoto quarter quadrangle doqo these are available from many sources including the u.s geological survey there are also a range of commercial organizations that provide low-cost downloads of individual, individual and regional digital orthophoto quadrangle sets. Types of satellite digital imagery. Remotely sensed satellite data comes in two basic types passively collected data, and actively collected data. Passive data collection focuses on acquiring intensities of electromagnetic radiation generated by the sun and reflected off the surface of the planet. Active data collection is largely restricted to devices that send and generate a pulse of energy to that is reflected back to the satellite to be recorded. Most of the readily available data is passively collected and is limited to energy not absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. Satellite imagery based on passive re reflectivity comes in four basic types, which are visible, infrared, multispectral, and hyperspectral. Remote sensing is the acquisition of information about an object or phenomenon without making physical contact with the object. In contrast to in situ or on-site observation. Section 405 knowledge of acquisition, use, and limitations of crowdsourced and open source data and services. Understand the limitations of using another entity's collected GIS data. GIS data gathered for one entity's project may not fully encompass the needs of a new or different project that the data is being used for. Understand the, lim the limitations between a paid data source and a free-to-download data source. Understand the limitations of a data source completed by multiple individuals. OpenStreetMap is a huge collaboration of different contributors. Due to huge collaboration, it could be more accurate due to a lot of contributors, but it could also be inaccurate due to it relying on individuals.